Seeds are pretty amazing. These tiny little things contain all the genetic material to make a plant. Plants that we can eat. Just look at these cabbage seeds right here. These tiny little seeds turn into a head of cabbage. But how long do seeds last? The answer may surprise you because many seeds can remain viable for quite a long time under the right conditions. As a budding home gardener and seed saver, I've asked myself this question, how long do seeds last? And if you Google it, you'll find charts kind of like this one. As a general rule of thumb, a lot of garden seeds like tomatoes, these peppers, the lettuce that I have growing up above me, those seeds can remain viable for one to five years. And then things like beans, corn, squash, those seeds can last five plus years, over 10. But these are just general rules of thumb because I know of seeds that have lasted a whole lot longer. One of the most famous instances of an ancient seed germination is the case of the Judean date palm. These seeds were estimated to be around 2,000 years old. And in 2005, scientists successfully germinated one of these ancient seeds, making it one of the oldest known examples of seed germination. But you probably don't have 2,000 year old seeds sitting around. But what about 18 year old seeds, like this seed packet? I'm a bit of a scientist and love experimenting. So last summer, when I found a bag of old seeds at an estate sale for only a dollar, I had to buy it. One, just to see what was in there, but then also to see if these old seeds could germinate. All the packets of seeds that I tested were unopened, but not well taken care of. They were probably in the worst conditions possible for storing seeds. In an unconditioned building, sitting in a plastic bag with clear signs of rodent damage. I tested 10 different seed packets, which were all unopened. The first one being a small grape tomato, which were pelletized seed, then an other tomato variety. Then there were some watermelons that were in these foil packets. I have several different ones from a company called Survival Seeds for Patriots. Uh, I think their whole shtick is that if you know the world ends, uh, you'll have seeds saved. So I was very interested to see if these seeds would do better because not only were they in these foil packets, many of them were in additional packets inside the foil packet. Other ones, some cantaloupe, cauliflower, and peas. Now I also had some sweet basil, parsley, garden beans, and sweet corn. To test these seeds, I put them on a moist paper towel, into a Ziploc bag, labeled them, and then waited. Every few days, I would come carefully, check the seeds and see what had germinated. Starting off, they were kind of slow, but with time, most things started germinating. Except for the beans and corn, which got funky pretty quickly and developed this nasty film. So I made sure to rinse those and put in new bags with new paper towels to see if they would sprout. I'll get to the results at the end of the video, but before that, let's talk about saving seeds and ensuring that they stay viable for longer. You want your seeds to last. And with that, it all really comes down to proper storage. Starting off the container. I like to store my seeds in either a mason jar like this or a Ziploc bag. And any seeds that I save from my garden, I have in these little envelopes right here, these little paper envelopes. I'll include a link down below to these if you're interested. Paper is good because it breathes. It allows things to move in and out. Now you don't want a lot of uh, breathing because you want it to be in a nice controlled environment. You know, no direct sunlight, no changes in moisture. Ideally, low moisture is better. But the paper is nice because it doesn't trap moisture up against the seeds and cause them to get moldy. The second tip, which doesn't have to do so much with storing but organization, is to make sure that you include the date on your seeds. These ones were saved from last year and are some marigolds. This is important because if you've got seeds saved over a long amount of time, 
Maybe you wanna start cycling in those older ones to grow new crops from them and save fresher, more viable seeds. So the date is a nice, important thing. I like to put the date, um, this one just says marigolds in uh, 2023, but I have other seed packets where I have information about how the seed or how the plant grew, um, certain characteristics about it, if someone gave me the seed, who they were, I've got several from my dad. So I like to take little notes on the package. So include the date, the, the plant, and some details about it. The next tip would be these little silica packets, which you can buy in bulk online. I'll include a link down below. These absorb moisture. Moisture is the enemy of seeds because it's a breeding ground for fungus, mold, all sorts of nasty things that are going to eat away at your seeds and destroy them. So I like to use these little silica packets. As an additional tip and kind of a, a bonus thing, let me see if I can get one in here. They're all the way at the bottom, but these are oxygen absorbers. Oxygen absorbers are great, especially if you're gonna do longer term storage, because once you seal up that container, it'll suck all the oxygen up into it, lock it up, and without oxygen, mold's not gonna grow, uh, there's not gonna be any oxidation of your seeds, and if the off chance that there were any pests there, those pests will die. So oxygen absorbers are great, especially if you want longer term storage. If you're gonna be storing your seeds just for a few years at a time before you're using them, you probably don't need those. And for longer term storage, you may consider putting them in the freezer or the refrigerator. I grew up doing this, my dad did this, storing our seeds in the freezer and it always worked. Some people say that the freezer is a little too harsh, that you only need a refrigerator. Some people say that that's overkill. If you've got a basement that remains nice and cool year round, pretty consistent temperature, that's probably totally fine. Now, if you're going to store them in the freezer or the fridge, again, make sure that they are in a container that doesn't let moisture in, especially in the refrigerator. There's a lot of moisture in the refrigerator. So a nice container, like a Ziploc bag, and then again, with those silica packets. And now back to my experiment and the germination rates that I saw. When purchasing seeds from a lot of companies, you'll actually see the germination rate listed on them. Uh, I have seeds that have germination rates ranging usually above 80. A lot of them even have a 98, 99% germination rate. So that's always a good thing if you're purchasing seeds to, to see a company that has that germination rate because they're testing their seeds before they're selling them to you. So for the Ace Tomato that was from 2007, out of the 20 seeds tested, eight germinated. So that is a 40% germination rate. The jelly bean tomato, which was my oldest one from 2006, out of the 20, again, eight, so 40%. Now those beans that got all funky, the top crop bean from 2010, out of the 19, I didn't have 20 for that one. That's the only one, everything else has 20. Um, out of that top crop bean, zero. So even though beans and corn and squash are supposed to you know, remain viable for longer, uh, these didn't do well. Maybe it was with how I was testing them, but they got all slimy and funky and it was just uh, no bueno. Now the Lincoln pea that was in that foil packet, out of the 20, 100% germination rate. All 20 germinated. The Snowball Cauliflower uh, from 2013, 18 of those germinated, so that's a 90% germination rate. The Parsley, uh, 16 of those germinated, that's a 80% germination rate. Oh, and those were from uh, 2013. The basil from 2018, 0%. I thought that maybe the basil wasn't germinating because it wasn't warm enough, so I moved it to a different location uh, near the heating mats and everything in my little grow kind of room set up in my laundry room, but still no change, 0% germination. The cantaloupe that was in that foil packet from 2013, only one germinated. So that is a 5% germination rate. A watermelon uh, in the foil packet from 2014, 18 of those germinated. So 90% germination rate. And lastly, corn, just like the beans that got all funky, none of those germinated. I had hopes for them because they started off being rather shrivelly, and once they soaked up water, you know, they inflated and they looked like they were gonna do something, but then they just 
got all rancid smelling. So uh, corn didn't work, but again, it may have been with my paper towel, water, Ziploc bag kind of methodology. Maybe that's not the best way to do corn and beans, but I'm pretty sure it should work since it worked for peas and peas, beans, you know, they're kind of related, they're legumes, but I don't know. And there you have it, the results of my test and some tips on how to best save seeds. These are some of the seeds that I am growing this year. If you want to see all of these seeds in detail, I made a whole video about my 2024 seed haul. I'll link it up above, down below. And if you like this video and want more videos about gardening and generally living a happier, healthier, more sustainable life, be sure to subscribe. My name is Tyler Lloyd and I wish you the very best. See you later. Bye.